So welcome everyone to the Parkinson's Foundation's Mindfulness Monday. I am your host, Krista Ellis. If this is the first time uh, that you're joining us today, welcome. And if you continue to show up for yourself in a mindful way, I am just so grateful uh, that you have the time and capacity and the willingness uh, to show up for yourself mindfully. If it's your first time, it will everyone will be muted for the session. Feel free to connect and communicate through the chat function, ask us questions, and um, you'll see that a lot of us are joining on video. So if you are comfortable with it, feel free to connect and um, show your shining face through uh, the World Wide Web's video streaming. Our next live session will be October 31st. Feel free to um, dress spooky, come spirited uh, for the Halloween season. I might stop at the dollar store and get something fun. Uh, so that'll be October 31st. Next week is our Spanish programming for our community who uh, is bilingual or are speaking primarily in Spanish. This Wellness Wednesday, we are doing our PD 101. So if you're new to Parkinson's disease, your family members new to Parkinson's, um, this is the program for you. It kind of highlights and addresses the major key points of a journey through Parkinson's disease, where to start and what you and your family should know. This Friday is our live fitness Friday. We're targeting cardio balance and multitasking. So please join uh, Jennifer and my colleague, Annie Long, who will be on the fitness Friday live stream. If you'd like to learn more about the future sessions of PD Health at Home, whether that's Mindfulness Mondays, Wellness Wednesday, or Fitness Friday, uh, visit parkinson.org slash PD Health. Calling all care partners. Our, we are coming back in person for our Care Partner Summit regionally. You can join us in person or online. Uh, the cities are listed on the screen. We'll be in Kansas City, Terrytown. Atlanta, Brookfield, and Portland on the corresponding dates. So find um, the program that is nearest to your home or uh, the outline of speakers that you're most interested in and join us. Care Partners, this program is for you. Um, it's also a great opportunity for people with Parkinson's to learn about the journey that your care partner is going through with Parkinson's disease. So uh, join us, join us, join us. I will be in person in Atlanta, Georgia on November 5th. Um, so you can see me there if you guys uh, show up in person. Find out more at parkinson.org slash summit. And don't forget, the Parkinson's Foundation is here for you. We have an extensive, comprehensive webpage, parkinson.org. I get lost in the depth of information that's on the website. So please do find the resources and support that you need through the Parkinson's Foundation's website at parkinson.org. We also have a bilingual helpline staffed by Parkinson's Information Specialist. That number is 1-800-4PD-INFO. Or if you prefer to email, you can email us at helpline at Parkinson. Org. It's been some time since I got to share the space with our expert facilitator today, Dr. Taylor Rush, joining us from the Cleveland Clinic. And I'm just so honored and privileged to have you here guiding us through our session today. Dr. Rush, um, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much, Krista. It's so good to be back in person today and seeing everyone. So I hope everyone is able to enjoy something that may resemble fall weather, depending on where you live. Uh, and uh, I know here in Cleveland today, we're feeling it. Um, it's feeling pretty fall. I think it's in the 40s today for a high. So I've got my sweaters out and it's it's full blown and, and it's beautiful. And we have all these lovely leaves changing, um, but it is aggravating my allergies. So I apologize if I'm a little raspy today. So. Um, so today I thought that we could spend a little time exploring how we can apply some of our mindfulness skills to transitions. And so, you know, it's, it's fall, it's a season of transition, it's a season where we're seeing things change. And I think um, so often we end up going through seasons of change and transition sometimes expectedly and sometimes unexpectedly. And um, some of those transitions can be wonderful and sometimes they can be incredibly difficult. And regardless of the transition, even if it's a positive one, often change is stressful 
and it can be really difficult to navigate, even if we know it's going to be for the best. You know, as humans, you know, we really like certainty. We really like having a plan because we equate that to comfort. We equate that to safety. And when things start to change, the plan may no longer be in place that we thought we had. And so things have to transition as a result. And so when patients are coming in to see me for therapy, often it's prompted by a time of transition. And so for some people that may be the diagnosis of their Parkinson's disease, it may be that they're transitioning into retirement after a 40 year career. It may be that they're experiencing an empty nest for the first time after the last of their children are going off to college. Um, it may be a time of separation or divorce. It could be that they've lost someone that they love. It could be that they're moving out of their home of 30 years into something that's you know, more economical. And then certainly we've all had many, many, many changes that have resulted from the pandemic over the past two years, that it almost seems like change is the norm rather than the exception oftentimes. And so I find that when people come in and they're at the precipice of change or fully you know, in the middle of it, there's a ton of different emotions that can come up when they're trying to navigate change. And so, you know, I wonder for you guys in thinking about change and some of what you've experienced, you know, if you wanted to write in the chat, what are some emotions that you associate with transition or change? What, when you think of, oh, I have to change or, you know, something's going to be different in my life, what, what emotion is evoked with that? Regardless of the change, good, bad, or questionable. I'm getting the responses, Dr. Rush. Okay, um, I'm seeing a couple of anxieties, yes. fear, anxiety. Yeah. Anxiousness, sadness, Anxiousness, sadness, overwhelm. Overwhelm, absolutely. Yes. I'm seeing a theme here. Fear, uncertainty, sadness, anxiety. Nervous. Nervous, yes. So it's often not necessarily a, a strong positive emotion. So someone did say excited that, you know, we have some adventurous people that really embrace change. Um, insecurity, that's, that's a big one. That's, that's a good one. Fear of the unknown, frustration, overwhelm, yes. So you guys are well familiar with some of these emotions associated with change. Yes, frustration, ex yeah, excitement, okay. So yes, so you guys covered some of the big ones. So we have, ooh, resolve, I like that. So if I'm gonna go through change, I'm gonna go into it with eyes wide open. That's, that's great. Um, so many of the ones that I tend to see when I'm working with people include sadness, anxiety, which many of you can relate to, anger, some resistance to change, confusion about how to move things forward in a way that makes sense, helplessness, and grief. Grief is one I don't think we often label with change, but oftentimes with change, it means that things are going to look different. It means that you know we may have to let go of the way things were and you know, transition to a new state of being or a new normal, so to speak. And so with that is grief of what we used to have or what we used to expect. And so it's often something that, that I don't know that we always label as such. And so when we're dealing with some very strong, compelling and sometimes overwhelming or frustrating emotions, it can lead to feeling very physically drained, very emotionally drained. For many of my um, folks who have Parkinson's, they notice that when they're in the midst of a stressful transition, their symptoms can worsen, their tremor can worsen, their freezing can worsen, their medications don't seem to work quite as well. 
oftentimes their ability to care for themselves is is somewhat diminished. They, they may not be doing the things that they would normally do to protect their sleep or um, make healthy choices with exercise or eating or things like that. And all of that can lead to feeling very stuck in the midst of this transition. And it makes it really hard to make decisions about what to do and how to move forward because it just all feels like this huge wall right in front of you and you, how do you break through it? And so, you know, when we're trying to navigate change, I think it's important to recognize some of what we can do with the mindfulness skills that you have learned in, the, in these meetings, if you've been with us before. And so I just kind of want to briefly go through that, and then we'll do a, a short meditation exercise on, uh, on change and, and how we can foster attitudes to help us move through it. So one tool that we'll often discuss with um, navigating transition is acceptance. And you guys who, who have been with us for a while, you know that, uh, that I have uh, talked about acceptance at nauseum. And, um, and this is something I think that was just that important because acceptance, you know, in the midst of change and, you know, being able to see what the situation is or what it is, it's, it's not surrender. It's not, you know, saying that I'm I'm defeated by the situation. It's adapting. It's learning to figure out what the starting place is. So if you're trying to figure out how to navigate from point A to point B on a map, you have to know where point A is in order to figure out how to get to point B. And so if I'm in Cleveland, I need to acknowledge and accept that I'm in Cleveland if I'm trying to, you know, get to Detroit. And so we have to know where our starting place is. It's not accepting that that's where it's always going to be. It's just where we begin. And then really noting your thoughts and your emotions about the change and not only just noting them, but really trying to describe them and vocalize them. And last month I, I did a, a session on how to, you know, to put names to emotions and why that is so important. And, you know, I think in the midst of change, understanding some of those emotional consequences, as well as, you know, what the realistic consequences are of change on your life, what are those ripple effects, and how is this going to make things different? And sometimes in the midst of describing this and talking about it, we can sometimes better tease out what it is that we're holding on to very tightly, because in the midst of change, sometimes we hold on to things that we don't want to see change, that we don't want to let go of, even if it may not be in our power to hold on to it and keep it the same. And so, and that's a totally normal human reaction. And we all do it. We all hold on to things, even if we know it's not something we're going to be able to hold on to forever. You know, so, so when, you know, my, my kids were small and they were, you know, super cute and, you know, said all these words in cute ways that were wrong. You know, you, you don't want to correct them. You just want them to be able to say it those cute ways forever, even though, you know, they're going to grow up and they're going to you know, start acting like humans. But, you know, you just want to hold on to some of those moments, even though it's something that will change. And so recognizing what those things are that you're holding on to. What, what is it that you attach to it in terms of your values? What makes it so important? And maybe what expectations are you holding on to with those two? And recognizing what it is that serves you to hold on to versus what may serve you better to let go. And that's a hard process and often one that we spend a lot of time on in therapy sessions with folks. And then being able to compare practice some compassion towards yourself and recognizing change is hard for everyone because it is. Um, it's, you know, it, there are some situations where we can accept it and move through it more gracefully than others, but for the large in part, change is very hard. And we may think other people handle it better than we do. We may think other people don't have the same struggles, but I'm just telling you right now from experience and working with enough people, we all have those struggles when trying to transition, when trying to navigate change. So know that you're not the only one struggling and maybe give yourself an inch of grace to, to acknowledge and you know, recognize that struggle is part of the norm. And then 
being able to make decisions on how you want to move forward. So seeing the situation for it is, which is what we do with acceptance, being able to recognize how we actually feel about the situation and what our values are that are attached to it. And then how do we want to choose to respond? Because there may be situations where change is, the change itself is not within our control, but how we respond to it is in our control. So how do we want to answer it? How do we want to maybe sometimes change how we do things compared to how we've done them before? So maybe your tendency is to draw inward when you feel stressed and not reach out or ask for support. But really in, in this new situation, it may be better to talk to other people who have been through what you've been through. You know, talking to other people who've been diagnosed with Parkinson's, talking to other people who have been through grief or loss. And so recognizing that there can be larger support systems in place, even though your tendency may be to draw in. And sometimes recognizing that you know, expectations and roles need to shift. And so the way that you used to be able to manage things on your own before, you may need to involve others in order to navigate through it more successfully. And so recognizing with a beginner's mind, as we've talked about in previous sessions, that you know, sometimes we have to look at a situation with a new pair of eyes and see that you know, a new set of coping skills may be required, even though that is also a little bit of change that's uncomfortable. So I want to um, go through a meditation exercise with you guys um, that is geared towards how to, how to think about change a little bit in terms of its enduring nature and how it ebbs and flows. And so we're gonna do a little bit of a, what, what, what I call a river of meditation. And so, um, so let's get, you know, in our comfortable positions within, you know, our space in each of our login spots here. And, you know, just try to get in a position where your feet are well supported, your back is well supported, your sit bones are supported. And you can close your eyes or you can find a fixed point a few feet in front of you where you can softly gaze. And as we do with most meditations, I want you to start with focusing on the journey of your breath. Noticing your breath where you feel it the most as it comes into your body. So nose, mouth, back of the throat. Noticing it travel down to your abdomen. And noticing with the exhale, how the air comes back out. Allowing yourself to let go of other thoughts that may run in and out of your mind, which is completely normal, and gently redirecting yourself back to the breath anytime you sense that your thoughts are beginning to wander. Mindfulness is not keeping your attention on any one thing. It's about learning how to bring your attention back to where you want it. And slowly feel the awareness of your breath spread throughout your body. Noticing top of your head, down through your neck and shoulders, chest, back, belly, hips, legs, feet, arms may be resting at your sides, allowing the breath to move throughout your body.
Noticing if there are any areas where you might be holding on to a little extra tension or energy. Sometimes it may feel sort of fidgety or restless, or you may notice certain parts of your Parkinson's symptoms more as you try to rest. Just take a moment to acknowledge those feelings. Just witness it. Just let the restlessness be. See if you can almost fold it into your breath. Letting that energy get taken by the breath and flow out of the body with each exhale. And as you allow yourself to let go of that energy, I want you to briefly paint a mental picture. I want you to imagine that you are out in nature sitting on a log near the bank of a flowing river. Maybe you even feel your feet in the water, feeling the water gently flow over, cooling your feet. You can smell the fresh air of nature, hear the birds chirping, feel a soft breeze on your arms. Taking a deep breath in here, allowing it to energize you. And as you breathe out, feeling a sense of peace flowing down your body, almost through your toes and into the river. Allowing the water of the river to be a vehicle for any of that unwanted jitteriness or energy. Letting it release with each breath and flowing into the peaceful river. Letting the water carry away any stress or stagnancy. Letting go of what you no longer want to hold on to. And while the river might be calm right now, recognizing that it goes through transitions too. When it rains in torrents, it rises and overflows. When there's a drought, the water might go down to a trickle. The river endures many transitions over time and sometimes has to adapt and change paths, just like we do in life. Sometimes our lives feel rapid and chaotic and it feels like we're overflowing with change and stress. Other times our lives may be smooth and calm, kind of like the river today. And other times we may even feel a sense of stagnancy without enough happening quickly. Even though inevitably things change and our lives start to flow again. Again, imagine that you're sitting on that log with your feet in the river, noticing that sense of connection between you and nature. 
remembering that regardless of change that occurs, the river keeps flowing. And remembering that you can always come back to this flow anytime life seems too crazy, too chaotic. You can come back to this place of peace. So often suffering comes from trying to control the flow of our lives. We try to add or take away. But ultimately relief comes from being able to flow with change. When you're ready to leave the river, gently bring your awareness back to your body in your chair. Feeling your feet support you, feeling your back against the chair. And taking a deep breath here. Slowly shifting ever so slightly, innervating your body, awakening your muscles. And when you feel ready, opening your eyes. Okay, starting to see some eyes peeping open. So this one's a little, a little different. You know, we have some of these meditations that are a bit more imagery based, which I find can sometimes be very grounding, especially when we feel like we're the ping pong ball in the hurricane. We can really use some grounding. So would certainly invite folks to share their experience with this meditation or this topic of transition. You can probably field a few comments and questions. Not an easy topic, right? Yeah, this is this is one that sometimes makes people a little uncomfortable, but that's kind of the the edge I like to skate with you guys. Just just on the edge of discomfort, you know, it's where we like to live. Okay, so people liking the image of the river, going with the flow, thought provoking. Um, I. I like some of the nature meditations it, it, and it, I think it can bring us to those, you know, happy places that just help us to you know, center and remember what's important to us, provides a sense of solace within our own minds that we don't often allow ourselves to have. Absolutely. And someone had said that they like the idea of the water carrying unwanted stuff away. Yes. Again, it's, it's amazing the, the power of imagery and how it can help us. Our bodies actually respond really vividly to it. And so even if we can't make it to the river or to the mountain in real life, we can certainly benefit from its scenery in our mind's eye. Okay. All right, great to let go. I'm glad that you guys like this one. Krista, anything that you would like to add for today? 
not to put you on the spot or anything. I'm still trying to <laughs> come out of the, the, the state that your meditation just brought me in. Um, but so thank you, Dr. Rush. Um, there's a lot of changes, right. And even universally metaphysically and energetically our physical environment is transitioning, right. And Jacqueline, uh, really alluded to the, the art of letting go last week as, as the leaves fall from the trees. Right. And, um, it really uh, was a beautiful pair of, you know, letting the water flow just as it, as it, as it does naturally um, and reminding us to ebb and flow with those changes and navigating um, the way the water moves. Um, we are 90% water, right? Or 99% water, something like that. So drink your water um, and maybe that will encourage, encourage all of us to move a little bit more easily and, um, those parts of life that we don't, we don't have control over. So thank you for uh, bringing me there today, Dr. Rush. You are very welcome. Thank you for, for letting me share this with you guys. If you did miss, I saw Connie, um, I missed that one. If you missed last week's um, session with, um, with Jacqueline Fitch, it's on our YouTube channel. It's on our PD Health at Home, uh, parkinson.org slash PD Health. Um, recorded session. So you can always visit the ones if you're not able to join us live. Um, yeah. So Roxanne, I see you. I see you. I, I gave you a shout out at the beginning, um, of seeing her connecting with people in person. So um, Dr. Rush, thank you for your time today. And um, I think I'm going to take my lunch break at the river down the street. So. Oh, lucky. I love it. All right, Thank everyone, all. I will see you live on October 31st. Tune into recorded sessions next week. Um, and we'll, we'll come dressed up in spooky attire, if you will. Um, and then we'll, we'll ring in the November, the month of November, the month of gratitude on October 31st. So I'll see you all then. <laughs>